access today. Um, ah, it's uh, the uh, SSID today is CBI uh, Gast in Dutch. Um, SFD 2012. <coughs> the, the username and password CBI. Um, uh, we have two rooms and one breakout room. Uh, the breakout room is meant for uh, people who want to dive deeper, for example, in Scratch. If people want to learn more about Scratch today, <coughs> they can uh, ask you if you can uh, give them uh, hands-on uh, uh, practice in that. <coughs> we also have uh, two uh, stands on the Open Education Bazaar from uh, Wikimedia Netherlands. Van uh, Spijsnaut is doing that. Uh, we also have uh, Soleus, uh, network, uh, network, vereniging, network cooperation, Lennart van Ando. Uh, uh, so uh, feel free to ask them about uh, what they're doing. Uh, now I will uh, invite the sponsor. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day here, at half past six, um, uh, booking.com uh, 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 They are sponsoring an engineer some beers in the restaurant The Polder. It's, um, if you walk out of the CWI here to the train station, you can't miss the, the cafe restaurant The Polder. So uh, you are welcome there. Uh, yeah. And um, in case you are a Perl programmer, they are looking for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, now I'll uh, invite you to uh, start talking about uh, Scratch. Thank you. Uh, welcome. I'm Luke van Moffen. My name is here. Uh, uh, Yuk, by the way. Please talk loud. <laughs> yeah. Once again, I'm Luke from Montfort. I'm here on behalf of Scratch Lab. Uh, welcome everybody. A special welcome to my partner in crime, one of my partners in crime, Helen. She's the only woman here. Um, it's strange. Um, because half of our population is uh, female. And I think the subject, open education, open software, isn't male at all. But um, when the invitation came by, I've, I've never read about this day, or Software Freedom Day. Um, I'm a fond user of open source software, but I, I'm not part of the community. But I've heard of this uh, meeting with the uh, subject of being open education, and then I thought, okay, I have to come over and tell my story. I'm very active with promotion of Scratch in the Netherlands. You'll learn in a few minutes what it's all about. Uh, Scratch is open in all directions. It is open source software. It's based on open source software. It can go a lot of directions, but also inside the program, it's totally open. It's intended to be an environment to let children uh, learn. <coughs> and the best way to learn is in an open environment where you feel comfortable. Um, next Friday, there's a big event at NEMO, the Science Museum of Amsterdam. The event is called um, 
Italy, uh, Discovery Festival. It's a science and art festival. Three cities, the Amsterdam city. There's a program. It's science, uh, psychology, math, physics, medicine. Um, uh, small talks, so called Pecha Kucha talks. And I've never given a Pecha Kucha talk, but I prepared one for this evening, so next Friday. And today will be a rehearsal. So in a few minutes' time, I will start my Pecha Kucha. Um, You're going back to the future, right? Yeah, kind of. <coughs> Very good. Yeah. Somebody here is a super snelle micro talks, it's called. In the barn over there, you know, one and a half thousand people in this big museum. All everywhere there are installations and things you can do, and when you're in for a drink, you go to the bar and then you can run across me or some of the other 15 people who are preparing pitch your culture talks. Talks, 20 slides, 20 seconds. Uh, no influence by the speaker. I've never, no, okay. I'll prepare my Pesha Kucha now. Um, and they forced me for some reason to provide the slides 10 days before, and that's why I can do it now because normally I tend to uh, make the slides the night before. <laughs> um, but this time I, I finished them yesterday, so. <laughs> um, yeah. This is the most difficult part. It's taken over by the Play each slide for a minimum of 20 seconds. Okay. Music. from now you'll know everything Scratch. Scratch is software. It's made use of modern technology to create a learning environment. As the inventors uh, at Life on Kindergarten aim, they, will, they try to bring kindergarten to school and not the other way around. Computers, uh, technology, is uh, getting more and more ubiquitous. It's quite difficult nowadays to, to prepare a slide without computers. You can't go far without leaving your computers. This picture is taken from the New Yorker this summer. Uh, this is how holiday 2012 looks like. Five people, five computers. All this stuff, cars, bars, radios, they run on a certain amount of uh, program, program system. The usage of computers is fun and practical. Nothing there to explain. Uh, some icons and a spreadsheet program. All of these services cost next to nothing, albeit that the meaning of free might be something like all costs hidden for the user. That's exactly the point of this guy, Douglas Roshkov. He grew up with computers and was an artist in the early internet days. I'll show a movie of him, by the way. Uh, and he points out that there's a lot of money at stake, and if there's some code to get your money in my pocket, oh, right. Like or somebody else will do. So, better know something about the system. And the good thing is that using computers is fun, but building computers is also fun. Uh, this is the banana piano. And you play it by touching the bananas. And there is some code here. And the question is, uh, what does it look like? It looks like this. It's code made scratch style and that means Lego style. Codes, scripts are built out of blocks like you build houses and cars out of Lego blocks. <coughs> and any combination of blocks has some use. Maybe you have to find out which use, but it's playing. This is the scratch interface. There's a stage, some actors, and the actors will do nothing if they don't have a script. So here you build scripts, and scripts you build from blocks. There are eight boxes of blocks, 
these are the blue blocks moving. <coughs> and it's just dragging blocks into the working place. Scratch claims, low floor, easy access, high ceiling, everything's possible, and white walls, you name it. This is low floor, it's a scratch part, it's a teaching material. Uh, it's a very small program, the cat follows the mouse. When the green flag is clicked, point towards mouse pointer and go a few steps forever. Here you see something of the high ceiling, a 13 year old guy named Zeldax, here from Amsterdam. He uh, made a very complicated uh, version of his uh, Super Mario game. It works. He needs some variables, conscious variables. And you see it's... Uh, <coughs> well, if you have time, in motivation, you can make big things. The Scratch website uh, collects all these projects. There are two and a half million projects. <coughs> you see nine of them. And it should give you some idea of why. Uh, go to the Scratch website, put in your favorite subject, and you find some projects on it. What will happen if you start scratching? Well, the first thing is the, the total environment is so open and easy that you are encouraged to state your own problems. You don't solve the problems other people tell you to solve, but you just like on the beach. You can decide, okay, I'll build a castle uh, capable of standing rough storms. And then comes the process of abstractions, rough storms. What is it? It's, it's abstraction. It's getting the dirty things out, the small things out. To, uh, like Van der Leck, who uh, painted storm like uh, rough water and people walking towards the wind is furthering uh, clothing. When you have your uh, idea straight, abstracted, it's time to, uh, to automate. The picture here, uh, uh, I really encourage you to visit the Turing exhibition. This is a Turing machine from Lego, it's right here, it's built here, it's exhibited here. Um, and when you think it's ready, uh, it's time to test. Um, testing, debugging, making it better, and again. Skater can tell you that testing debugging is a loop process. And then you think, okay, time to share. I have a nice post project, or I have a half a project which I want to discuss. Uh, in this patch program, there's a share menu item on top of it, and uh, the first line says share this project online. Easy. When I was young, in the 80s, DJs started to scratch record players and a uh, It was the first openly usage of other material, well, you know, artists uh, explicitly using other work to build their own. Scratch is based on that. You can remix uh, anything. This is me, 1965 less than two years old. And this is one of the best learning environments I live in. <coughs> I'm here learning something about my toes, how to pee in a pot, and there's a lot of stuff around me. And this is less than a year later, in the sandbox, it's an environment, uh, fully capable of learning. Uh, it's safe to explore, to experiment, and to express your feelings and ideas about it. And it doesn't matter if it's only filling a small box. On the contrary, we have schools. Uh, there's a guy named Ken Robinson, his statement is school skill creativity, partly motivated by the idea that um, divergent thinking gets less and less the longer you are in school. Uh, and he is right, testing is taking over uh, more and more. I think, and uh, we have scratch to rescue. <coughs> Forget everything, but we might scratch. Google it, and the first hit will be scratch MIT EU and uh, join the club. Thank you for your attention. This was my first Petra <laughs> Kutsch. Six minutes and 40 seconds. <coughs> I this one. Um, I'll continue with.
obviously, uh, I, I, I introduced a guy, uh, Rushkoff. And this uh, Rushkoff, he, uh, he promotes his book. And I like his book, so I keep on promoting. And here we go. When human beings acquired language, we didn't just learn to listen, we learned how to speak. When human beings acquired text, we learned not just how to read, but how to write. And now that we acquire computers, we should learn not just how to use them, but how to program them. Back in the 1980s, learning to use a computer was the same thing as learning to program one. But as computers got easier to use and more user-friendly, the distance between using a computer and knowing how it worked got longer and wider until we had extremely opaque interfaces through which you do what the program says without any idea of what's actually going on behind the screen. Ask any kid what Facebook is for and he'll tell you, well, Facebook is here to help me make friends. No, they're looking to figure out how to monetize people's relationships. If you don't know what the software you're using is for, then you're not using it, but being used by it. Back when I first got on the internet, I saw networking as the next great leap in human evolution, that we were moving towards a new networked organism. And I'm amazed at how few of us have actually decided to participate in this project. In a digital age, or in any age for that matter, whoever holds the keys to programming ends up building the reality in which the rest of us live. Thanks to these technologies, we now have the ability to remake our economy, our education, our government, even our religions. If we don't seize the opportunity to remake our world, I promise you someone or something else will do it for us. Uh, I guess no news for you. Uh, I'm pretty sure that all of you are ten times as good at programming. So I'm not a programmer, I'm an evangelist of Scratch. Uh, I graduated with some programming in a mathematics subject. But after that, I, I never used it again, and now I'm a freelance teacher of Scratch. But I'm on a mission. Um, let me see. One and a half years ago, uh, two years ago, I, I, I ran into Scratch. It's Scratch is open source software from MIT first class. It's translated into 40 languages. Um, and it comes with tons of teaching materials. Um, however, these materials are in English. If you look in Netherlands, uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of people have encountered Scratch uh, one or other, one day or the other. Uh, but hardly anybody uh, continues using it. And I think that's a real pity because it's in an educational setting one of the best software choices, I think. Uh, schools have, because Scratch teaches this part of computing, which was important in the 60s, the 70s, of the last and next century. And <coughs> computing is a, a serious matter, which should be taken, you know, I think, tech, serious care of in schools, and that's something totally different than what's happening nowadays. Uh, nowadays, children are taught to use computers with the uh, technology of today or mostly yesterday. When my kids were five, six years old, uh, end of last century, uh, in the basic primary schools of the Netherlands, computers were put inside. Actually, companies were encouraged, there was also some millennium work, uh, fear, to hand in their computers, let them be cleaned, and give them to the schools. So inside Dutch primary schools, you had old computers of old makes without any educational software. Three years later, the uh, government came with an idea. It would be nice if Dutch children 
are capable of using Windows and Microsoft Office uh, by the age of 12. This was 2002. The internet was, well, it, it already collapsed. A few years later, Dutch uh, educational system uh, discovered internet in 2005. The official learning task was to, uh, uh, to let children be aware of Google, Wikipedia. To, uh, so the, the computer has its main purpose being uh, connecting to information outside school. Uh, 2010, 2011, the, the buzzword is in Dutch uh, media website, media awareness, learning to handle media. Uh, and that's where the courses are. Open. So children are, yeah, I don't go too deep in it, and I, but I think you know, there's, a, there's a trend that schools have to teach what the uh, officials learned yesterday. And I think there should better be some educators who think you know, about the, 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 the two uh, possibilities of computing and teach that. And it's not uh, a changing subject. Um, so this is about my motivation. I can talk for hours on that. Uh, one half year ago, I uh, founded uh, SketchUp with the ambition to bring this decade computational skills back into the curriculum of schools. And it may be with Scratch, but I prefer to do it uh, independent of Scratch. But there's a 10 year program. Uh, I'm now in the first three years. I'm making noise about Scratch. This is part of it. Please spread the word. And uh, if I make enough noise, maybe in the next three years, people will pick it up and do it themselves. And at the end of the decade, I hope uh, educators will go deeper inside it and incorporate it really into their programs. Um, this is difficult. It's not uh, fancy and uh, fashion of the day, um, especially in the Netherlands. There are some countries around us, especially England, Ireland, and Islam, <coughs> um, but they're much ahead of us. Last January, the uh, British <coughs> Secretary of Education uh, visited BET, which is a large educational uh, ICT fair, and he told the audience, and that was really a blunt statement, that all ICT education as of September 2012, that's today, is uh, voluntarily, uh, not a black anymore. So all, all programs are, well, you can skip them. And he made this statement uh, to come back with it, uh, to make room for serious computing stuff at schools. So uh, that's interesting. Estland, uh, Estland decided um, to let programming be part of the curriculum starting at the age of six. <coughs> um, <coughs> back to Scratch Lab. Now, the Scratch Lab is a kind of, you know, uh, I make promotion for it. Coding is fun, and you better start today. Um, especially for an audience which is not into coding. But, um, when you have time, you should visit the site. I think. This is Estland. No, this is today's program. Oops. Oops. <coughs> this is the Scratch website. So, um, no, that's the other way around. I will start Scratch. As long as you're having a small, nice coding idea, just to prove that we can do it very quickly. <coughs> no? The game of Pong? The game of Pong. Is it too complicated? Hmm? Is that a good project? A good project. 
Well, now you say the game of Pong. Yeah, well, we can try to build it. Um, we don't need a cat, so I kept the cat away. Aww. In the game of Pong, we need a ball. Let's say we have a blue ball. Okay. And we need a pedal. Uh, let's say we have a straight line. Pedal. Yeah, anyway, my black pedal is fine with me. There's my pedal. The pedal should somewhere live here. And um, I start with the pedal. That's easy. Um, what I will do is when the game is started, it's a green flag. You can start also by other uh, buttons, but I start with the green flag. And if I want the pedal. To forever um, <coughs> set x to x is uh, well you know what x is I always explain to kids you know uh, kids of eight don't have difficulty with uh, uh, x and y the moment they are programming again uh, which normally they learn six years later but this is the x y screen um, so back to the program of the ball. Um, so this is the screen, the pedal, pedal. The pedal forever set X2, and now we should set something. I should take the X position of my <coughs> spike 2, so. Mouse, I would say. Now, set X2. Mouse X, okay, sorry. It's already pre-programmed. Mouse X. And now, you know, that's my pedal. Um, the ball. What should happen with the ball? No, let's start with the ball somewhere on top. So, <coughs> the ball, when the green flag is clicked, the ball will. Um, uh, go somewhere. Uh, go to x is minus 130, y is 153. That's accurate balls now. It's just I could randomize it, uh, but it's fine to me. Um, I should point in a direction. Oh, let's put some randomness inside here. Um, the direction is an degree and uh, so now when I click the green flag the ball will go there and point in some direction now it's pointing down and um, so much for randomness. Hmm? <laughs> we don't trust the randomness so now it's about pointing up <laughs> um, and after that the ball should start moving let's say uh, forever move 10 steps, it goes in the direction that just shows it above, and lift on edge, bounce, and if, 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 something should happen when we touch the, uh, the battle, uh, touch, 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 touch. By the way, this ball is a ball. You better learn people to yeah. code him to give uh, uh, good names. So now you can say this that when touching the bat, um, we should change the direction. And mm, bounce. Mm, bounce. Bounce. There's no bounce work. Uh, Only for edges. Hmm? Only for edges. Only for edges. Point in direction and also do some calculation. Um, I don't know. But 
I think it should be something like 180 minus the original direction. And the direction of the ball. Oops. Yeah. I'm not sure if this works. But that is it. Um, let's give it a try. Um, yeah. Here's the screen. Oops. script of the ball with a touch and breath game over um, so if 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 that's a control block you see the color coding there the best if sensing touching color and I should uh, try to get some red out here um, The script of the ball, you go to touching red. Um, so game over and um, stop all scripts. <laughs> you trust me that if there was a fast one. This is Scratch. Uh, this is the share button. So I put this project online. Uh, I'll give my credentials. I have a need to have an account. Uh, this is a full demo. It's, uh, it's a game. Okay. Data center and response. The project is online. Same menu. We'll go to the Sketch website and log in. And here is my phone game. And this one was yesterday. If you ever want to program a picture picture, you will find the code here. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, for sure. It just takes a moment uh, because of all the uh, so again. Uh, I'll go back to my program. Anybody? 
anybody in the world can play it. And if they like it, and they think, well, this is a nice uh, version of porn, uh, they have a download the two sprites and two scripts of the Pong demo. And once you do that, uh, anybody your favorite search term? Lentu. Hmm? Lentu. Lentu? Lentu. Yeah. Like you. B. Oh, Lentu. La Lentil Contale. <coughs> Ah, this is not, uh, not, not, not the food, but uh, uh, it's something about light. Mm. There are no project notes, I shall explain it, but I like it. <laughs> and so I will download it. This download button only works when I'm logged in. Mm -hmm. So they will, uh, only members of the community can download. I should finally download somewhere here. But are you allowed to redistribute it? To non-members? Yes. So when, when you put it online, it's for the world. Okay. Um, there is my lento. So I use my download to save the current project. No. <coughs> and you see the code. <coughs> and um, how open can it be? You make a game, you share it and other people download it and this is part two, this is this kind of thing um, when the green flag is clicked forever set gross effect to 25 so I click the green flag and then it will <coughs> gross effect is you know, uh, dim thumbly. this white has other scripts also some gross effect uh, when clicked, pan up, clear, screen is clear, set goes effect to 50 and then forever, go to x to 50, y9, and glide in 2 seconds to x minus 37, y9. So it keeps on um, forever <coughs> making this uh, entrance from the right side. And, uh, and when it arrives at the gray object, it will broadcast the uh, go message. And probably some other objects will wait for a go message. When I receive go, from this part of the, um, uh, the code, something will happen. Well, actually, it will depart from the lentil, the lentil concat. How many times left? It's 10 past 10. A few minutes. A few minutes. Five. Um, Maximum. I, I, I'm here all day. Uh, I've got some computers with Scratch pre-installed. Uh, feel free to, and there are also material which I will exhibit. Feel free to have a look. And, uh, feel free to have a... Um, <coughs> If you have some good ideas, join the club and uh, start blogging. Um, <coughs> this website is open for anything, coding and kids. Um, one thing I would also mention is uh, uh, I do this for uh, for a living, giving scratch workshops. Some some workshops are for free, like that. Getting the message out, but sometimes we get paid for it. I also have one regular workshop, it's every Thursday afternoon in uh, one of the poorer neighborhoods of Amsterdam, if you can say so. And um, I was inspired by Dave Eggers, who uh, invited people to start small uh, initiatives to give people some extra attention. If you ask teachers, what, what, what they are short of at school, it's most the first thing you say attention time. Mm -hmm. So, for that reason, I started a, uh, a scratch shop every Thursday afternoon, 3 to 6, uh, free coding for kids. 
and uh, this summer uh, I learned that Irish uh, Parliament had a the, the uh, Irish uh, well, Parliament member uh, he invited his colleagues to bring their kids to uh, to work as he was starting a Coda Dojo in Parliament. A Coda Dojo is an Irish initiative. It looks a little bit like the thing I'm doing in the Zeehondenput here in Amsterdam. It's uh, on a regular base uh, giving children the opportunity to learn to code. It was not, not a parliament member, it was the Secretary of uh, Education in Ireland. His ambition is to have 3,000 Coda Dojos in Ireland in a few years' time. 3,000 means in every village there should be a Coda Dojo. They want to be in front of the pack when it comes to coding. Uh, and for that reason, he made some publicity by starting one uh, in his own uh, environment. Um, Code Dojo started in Ireland, but it's worldwide. This is not a good thing. <coughs> um, it even were three in the Netherlands Amsterdam, The Hague, and Rotterdam, but they were all in the startup phase. And I realized that my uh, Zay had a good thing, was a Code Dojo. So I joined the club. So we now have four Code Dojos. But you can also have one as well. And there's no excuse as codeacademy.com provides you with all the materials for free. This is a, a Reddit, an interesting site. Uh, they have uh, very nice materials, all, all free and intended to learn all kinds of coding stuff. But, but is this Scratch or general? This is general. Well, okay. they have JavaScript, Python and Vida, Web Fundamentals, jQuery, and do you know 2012 Scott here? Yeah. It was an idea of the New Yorker back in January. Mm -hmm. Forget about losing weight, work on your coding skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot more to say, but um, I have had my 45 minutes of Amsterdam fit. Thank you. And, uh, Feel free to contact me if you want to know more.